let us give thanks to the beneficent and merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, for he has covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to himself, spared us, supported us, and has brought us to this hour. Let us also ask him to guard us in all peace this holy day and all the days of our life, the Pantocrator, the Lord, our God. O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, we thank you for everything, concerning everything and in everything. For you have covered us, helped us, guarded us, accepted us to yourself, spared us, supported us, and have brought us to this hour. Lord, why have those who afflict me multiplied? Many have risen upon me. Many say unto my soul, There is no salvation for him in his God. There is no salvation for him in his God. But you, O Lord, are my supporter, my glory and the elevation of my head. But you, O Lord, are my supporter, my glory and the elevation of my head. With my voice I cried unto the Lord. With my voice I cried unto the Lord. With my voice I cried unto the Lord. And he heard me out of his holy mountain. Never be alone, cause Father God, you're there beside me. I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises forevermore. I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises forevermore. Only son, I wonder how I managed to survive without the knowledge of your sacrifice and humility. But now I am your friend, I have awoken to your call for me. Jesus Christ, your King Almighty, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises forevermore, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will Sing your praises forevermore. Holy Spirit, wonder how I managed to endure without your comfort and your gentleness and authority. But now I am your temple, I'm a light to all those who see me. Holy Spirit, sanctify me, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises forevermore, I will sing your praises, I will sing your praises. 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. This has been an exceptional week, a week of many emotions, and mixed emotions, shock, pain, anger, surprise, but certainly not the emotion that was most intended, fear. We remember the verse in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 10, to not fear those who kill the body. We read scripture all the time, and it means different things to us at different times. But so much scripture has been revealed to us over this week, both in our own understanding and in the lives of those who we saw as the main actors in this strange unfolding tale. We saw strong men, physically strong, orchestrated, organized, brutal, heartless, taking life. We saw other men bound, captive, yet somehow serene and powerful in their witness. The strength and dignity with which they walked along that beach line is something we all should remember for many years to come. There was no fear in that step. There was a strength and there was a focus and there was a power that could only come from within. They were called those of the cross. And they walked the path of Golgotha along with their Savior. They walked bearing that cross valiantly, powerfully. And as they walked, there was one difference. The cross they bore was not a cross of shame. It was not the apparatus of their death. It was not a means of weakness. But actually, it was their badge of honor. It was their title, it was their name. It was the element by which they became known. It became an extension of themselves those of the cross. And while their captors thought that they were shaming them in using that term, it was actually the most glorious term to use. We're told in the first epistle of the Corinthians that 
the message of the cross to the world appeals appears foolishness but we know that for us the message of the cross as it continues in that verse is the power of god because it is through that cross on golgotha upon which our savior was raised that sin was defeated and the extension of that cross and what started on that cross was the empty tomb and the resurrection that we see the benefits of until today we don't fear because we don't hold on to this world our world is different this is a journey it's a journey for all of us it's a journey that in comparison to eternity is a very brief time and so we don't fear what happens here because we aspire for what is to come we desire it we look for it we yearn for it because it is the fullness of the fellowship that we have with god when we are no longer separated from him but are with him forever i have a problem with the use of the term martyr i think it has become overused and cliche in the past years almost everyone who dies for almost anything now is referred to as a martyr but in this situation at this time with these men it is undeniable it is irrefutable they were offered to change their faith and they denied they died for that faith they died calling upon the name of their savior they exposed a strength from within them and a conviction that many of us would even dream of and so yes and as it stands our church now through our holy father pope tadros recognizes their martyrdom and holds them in that position they are never just going to be people who died on a beach they are going to be placed forever into the records of our church and into the records of our hearts these men who we had never heard of a week ago now reside within us their memory their example their victory they have now become part of us part of all of us these men who were unknown they were from a poor village going to work and provide for their families like so many hundreds of thousands of others but now they are eternalized their life has changed forever they have transitioned from this life to the next the life that we all hope for you see during this week we have seen the best and worst of humanity we saw a very carefully and professionally produced and choreographed video whether it was faked or not faked whether it was shot in a studio or shot on the sea whether the men were artificially made to look bigger or not the reality is people went to that amount of trouble to bring fear into our hearts to instill terror it doesn't take away from what happened in actual fact it makes it all the more powerful this video was meant to make us all afraid i haven't heard one person say they're afraid since that day not a single one because we saw true power not the power of an oppressor 
not the power of someone who has captives. For I ask you, when you remember that scene, in your assessment, can inhumanity be seen as supremacy? Can the killing of an unarmed, bound, kneeling man be seen as strength? Can the dignified steps of those who slowly and purposely walked along that beach line to their deaths, knowing they were going to their deaths, could that really be seen as weakness? Can the acceptance of such an inhumane death, willingly, knowingly, out of conviction, be really seen as defeat? St. Paul reminds us in his second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 12, My grace is sufficient for you. My strength, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. We saw the power of God in these poor men who had gone to work as simple laborers, yet who became bearers of the cross and martyrs for their faith. Such an incredible irony. Men who are being executed, kneeling, bound, but with their heads raised high, and their seemingly powerful murderers with their faces covered, hiding their identities. I think it will be for each and every one of us to make our own decision on that. So we've seen the worst of a humanity that tries to instill fear and terror, and the greatest of humanity that is willing to pay the ultimate price for what it really believes. Martyrdom is not a thing of the past. We all live some form of sacrifice daily. People ask, if I was in that position, what would I do? I don't know. But I don't think when they went to work in Libya, they thought that they would be strong enough to die for their faith. They weren't prepared for it, they didn't know it was happening, they didn't go for it. But when the time came, their conviction was clear. And that power that can only come from on high came to them. And in their witness, we saw those beautiful words, those beautiful moving words of Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. Your hands are not, your lives are not in the hands of these people. Your power does not come from within you. Your life is in my hands. Power comes from me. And that is our solace. That is how we comfort ourselves and all those who come to pay their condolences and express their sympathy. We're rejoicing. We rejoice and we celebrate the valor and dignity and bravery of these men. Not because they held big swords and they fought for themselves, not because they took on an army, not because they killed oppressors, but they were dignified witnesses of their master. And they did not let go of him, even at that time. But we mourn. We mourn with their families. Men, fathers, sons, brothers, uncles, friends, who will never go back to their small communities. 
who will leave a void, but who will never be forgotten, who will be eternalized in the memories not only of their families or their villages or their communities or even their church, but the world. The world has seen them and the world has testified to them. Their loss has become our gain. We have become more empowered through them. But I want to be clear about something. Don't confuse my tone. Do not confuse defiance with anger or pain with hatred. We are defiant as those who believe in God. But we should never let anger enter into our hearts. For if we let that anger enter into our hearts, that is the ultimate defeat. Then we are defeated from within. We're reminded in the first epistle of St. John, chapter 2, that he who hates his brother is in darkness. We must live in light. Because our Savior has told us we're the light of the world and we live in his light. Finally, forgiveness and prayer. As the healing process continues, we must forgive. As unbelievable and unreachable as that sounds, we have no other option. Do we want to be consumed by anger? Do we want to be consumed by hatred? We're told by our Lord that we must love our enemies, those who persecute us. We must not only tolerate them, because tolerance is not a word for Christians. We must love, we must respect. We must not be drawn into a cycle of violence and hatred and resentment that spirals out of everyone's control. We have seen so many examples of this in our history. In our ancient history, during Diocletian, during the entrance of Islam into Egypt. More recently, in August of 2013, with the attack of churches, where the only retaliation, the only reaction, was for Christians to go out and write on the charred walls of their churches, we love you, we forgive you. That was a testimony. And today, we do the same. We do the same because we saw our brothers carrying their cross with dignity and paying their sacrifice with dignity. Let us not discredit their memory by turning that into anger. And let us not discredit their witness and their valor by transforming that into hatred. I shared with you yesterday and I share with you again very quickly today. Their mindset as they walked along the beach with the perception of what was going to happen. They were human. They may have felt something, anxiety, uncertainty. I'm sure that as they were there in captivity, they were prodded, they were tormented. Their emotions were abused. And going along that seashore with the sound of the waves, with the rush of the people around them, with the silent step of their oppressors walking by their side, that storm may have been increasing in their minds. As they knelt, the storm increased even more. As people spoke around them and mocked them even more. As those knives were raised, they understood. And then came that voice. 
that voice that calmed not only the seas but calm the spirits peace be still the stillness that came at the end of their witness the stillness that can only come from life eternal basking in the light of our savior in his love peace be still they carried that cross along that beach line but that's not where it stops for in romans 6 we see their steps for if we have been united together in the likeness of his death certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection and glory be to God forever <laughs>